Hi, this is Maria with StampingMaria.Blockspot.com. I'm a Stampin' Up! demonstrator, and I just want to show you how to make this box. It holds uh, standard size cards. So this is our four and a quarter by five and a half inch card, and our standard envelope there, an A2 envelope. So they fit right into the box like this. I made it pretty snug uh, up to those envelopes. I didn't want it moving around too much in there, but you could go out an extra um, eighth of an inch. This box measures four and a half by five and seven eighths, and it's one and a quarter inches wide. So let me show you how I made this. I've got a box bottom. This bottom is measures um, seven inches wide by eight and three eighths inches, and I scored it on all four sides at the one and a quarter inch mark. So I did that on all four sides. Just kept turning it. Then I cut here uh, one one on each side right up to that score line and I put a little notch right in there. Then the box top, the lid here, measure, uh, measures five and seven eighths inches by seven and a quarter and it's scored at five eighths of an inch all the way around. It has this, um, a height that's half of the measurement of the base. So this box, like I told you before, it measures uh, one and a quarter inches, so I took half of that and that's where I came up with this five-eighths measurement. Because I wanted half of the box bottom to show because I love that cherry cobbler look. So that's why I didn't have it being the same uh, width. So then just take your paper snips, move this out of the way, take your snips, and just cut right at these score lines. And I just cut a little notch right on the flap part. See, don't do what I just did there. I cut on the box part and I meant to cut on the flap. <laughs> so let's do it again. So you'll cut here, cut a little notch. And of course, you're going to have more time to do it better. Cut a little notch this way. Okay, so see that notch? And then you'll just fold on all the score lines and use your bone folder to give, your, give you a good crease. I'm going to have you, I'm going to show you just on this top, and then the bottom is assembled the same way. Okay, then you're going to use sticky strip to make sure it stays together, but for speed I'm just going to use the snail, and you're going to put the snail on these parts here, so on this flap. Then you'll just come straight up and glue these together. And this box top will not stay together with the snail. So you'll want to make sure to use your sticky strip. Okay, and then that assembles the box top. So you'll do the same thing to this bottom, and you'll end up with a base that looks like this. Okay. Then you'll just put, put them together, and you have your box. Okay. Then to decorate the box, I used, so I like to say I liked seeing that, and I took a strip of designer paper. Uh, this is the Frostwood Lodge paper, and I, it measures one and a quarter by eight and a half inches wide. So I went ahead and um, just started it at one end and made sure it was straight before I continued, and then just pinched as I went. So we're going to just pinch along here. Pinch. Good thing this is just my demo because I got a little smudge here. And then pinch it in. So what you'll do is just put some snail, run a strip this way, and then some snail there and there, and glue it together. And that's how you'll have your strip. And then to make the bow, Julie DiMatteo, another Stampin' Up! demonstrator, showed us 
how she gets a bow out of half a sheet of designer series paper. This sheet of paper is 6 inches wide by 12 inches long. And basically this is how she cut the pieces out. Uh, these are 1 inch strips. And she cut 8 1 inch strips. And then she cut a piece here that's 1 inches by 4 inches. And then she cut 4 pieces here that are 1 inch wide by 5 inches long. So you have 8 pieces that are 1 by 6, 4 pieces that are 1 by 5, and 1 piece that's 1 by 4. This 1 by 4 piece is what makes the bow loop. So you're going to use our um, 5 8 inch brads. You get 8 uh, eight of 4 colors, and these are the best because they have long tails. So what you'll do is you'll take your strips, and once you have the strips cut, you'll use the crop -a dial with the 8 inch uh, side and poke holes in uh, both ends and the same thing with the one inch by five inch pieces both ends the crop dowel gets a hole and then the piece that's the loop this was one inches by four inches long I just um, put some snail adhesive glued it together and then made a hole with a crop dowel in the center so to assemble the bow you'll just Put the piece down, flip it over, and twist it. Just like that. And you're going to keep it in your hand. Julie um, showed us what it kind of looked like when you glue these together, and she's right, it doesn't give you as natural a look. This way is a lot nicer. So I want to thank Julie for showing us demonstrators how she made this great bow. Then you tell I hold up my hand and just cross over. So now we've got a cross, and now we're going to do a cross inside the cross. That's how it kind of works easiest in my head. So I just start going around between those um, gaps there that were made from the first cross. And you can see you just keep holding it in your hand like this. And then your last piece of one inch by six inch. So you can see I've got a cross inside the bigger cross. Then we take our pieces of one by five inch and we start another cross inside here. And because they're not glued down, it's easy just to move the pieces around once they're all put together so that you can get that you know perfect bow you're looking for. If anything, homemade can be perfect or handmade. <laughs> so, okay, we've got that last one in. So you can see how it all starts lining up. Then you take the looped piece that's your center with the hole and put it right in the center. And then turn it over and open up those um, brad legs. And that's your bow. And then if you need to, just move it around a little bit. Kind of fluff it up. And you have your adorable bow. I love this. Thanks again, Julie. And then we just put um, some mini glue dots and put it on top. And then what I did was use this great stamp set, um, Delightful Decorations with the Ornament Punch to make the tag. I went ahead and got a piece of paper uh, that was three inches by four and a quarter and folded in half and then stamped the image right at the corner or right at the edge, I'm sorry, right at the edge and then put it through the punch and uh, made sure when I lined it up that I didn't go, I let the paper hang over the top so that when it punches out it comes and stays together and makes a nice little tag so that's how I got the tag on the box and put it on with some twine and this ends up finishing the box. So I hope you liked it. If you have any questions, let me know. And thanks for visiting. Bye-bye.